Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to take another look at particle systems but this time the hair part and we're going to use this to create a rug, right? A carpet. And carpets and rugs are a lot of fun to make. They come in a lot of different shapes and sizes. Um, but once you know the little trick, they're very easy to create, modify, adjust and create variations. So let's delete this and start with a rug shape. Shift A, mesh. Let's just start with the plane, go into edit mode and scale it up in the Y direction a little bit, right? We got a nice rectangular kind of carpet. Beautiful. Now, the first thing I would like to show you guys is how to um, make this a bit more cloth-like perhaps. Like if this will be a thin kind of carpet it will have some folds perhaps or um, whatever so what we can do is add a bit more geometry in edit mode and um, we can just right mouse and subdivide and then open up the menu and subdivide it a few a bunch of times and um, let's see if we can increase this there we go 20 perhaps even more let's let's no, go with 30 more 50 and uh, let's go with hundreds you know why not crank up that number beautiful and the fun thing is that once we go into sculpt mode, we have an option for a cloth, right? We have a cloth brush. And what that does is when I now just draw on this with a decent size and move this inwards, it's going to try and fold it up like cloth, right? It's going to move this mesh to the right, but in a way that would actually create some folds in our mesh. And this is an incredible tool, very useful also when you're creating clothing or anything that needs to have some folds and you don't want to run any cloth simulations because these are unpredictable, take time and take refinements. Um, but we can just take some very gentle movements to just create some fun organic shapes there, right? That's getting quite beautiful, a little bit smaller perhaps. Let's see, once we get some nice folds in there and th these folds are a bit too strong don't get me wrong um but we can just you know smoothen this out whenever we want which is the fun part right so you can just smoothen out anything you want if it gets too crazy right like this you can rotate it a little bit and get some other folds there there right now i'm going really crazy but i know i can just smooth this out whenever i want so it's totally fine um, something like this, right? A beautiful rug. Um, what I'm going to do is hold shift and just click a few times, right? Perhaps a little bit of a larger brush. Something like that. All right, so it's folded a little bit, but nothing too crazy, right? Perhaps it's this, this is too much, but just to show you what I mean. Quite beautiful. All right, go back to object mode and just shade this smooth, right? So this is our initial rug shape. Quite beautiful. Now to add hair, it is actually incredibly easy as well. We just go to the particle system, hit the little plus sign, and go to hair, right? Because hair is what is usually on a rug, interestingly enough. And we can just tune down the length, something like that. Beautiful. And then we can start playing around with these settings, right? So now, if you want some uh, random hair movements or some little bit of curls, for example, what you will do is go to the children trap and we would hit interpolated, right? That adds a lot of children particles in between of the particles that are already existing, right? Our main particles. And the main particles you can actually adjust in particle edit as well by grooming this into a direction you like, right? So our work could be, for example, a little bit um, in one direction, the hairs, or it could be like a nice kind of circular motion. Sometimes you see that as well. I suppose we can make a circular motion like that. I don't know. Whatever you feel like should be there. I'm just going to keep this nice and, um, well, straight up, I guess, because we will edit this in the children tab. So interpolate it. I'm going to set my display amount to like 50, just because I like to see the full scale of it. Maybe 30. There we go. And then we can play around with a little bit of clumping, roughness, and kink. And parting I don't really use, um, but clumping will make sure that these hairs are moving together, right? And you can see that they are going to be moving towards those primary particles, I guess. Okay, so the, the particles that are not the child particles. So the more particles we have here, 
the smaller these clumps are going to be. So set this to 2,000, the smaller these clumps are going to be. Set this to 5,000, the smaller the clumps are going to be, right? So keep that in mind a little bit as well. So once we have 5,000 particles here, we don't need 30 in the display, but 10, for example, right? So we can already tell what is going on. Now, what I like to do as well is go to my viewport display, set my strand steps to six. The same for the render. Just going to crank this up a little bit so that we can actually tell <laughs> what is going on in a second. Okay, so let's go to the children and let's just go to clumping and see how much clumping we really want. And the shape, I want this to be a little bit later. I don't want this to clump right away from the start, but just a bit later, perhaps like that. And then we can actually add a little bit of roughness too to create some randomization in those hair strands, right? So we can add a bit of uniform randomization. Perhaps that's a little bit much though, just a tiny bit. And we can crank down that scale a little bit as well. Or let's keep this one a bit larger actually. And with a bit more uniformity, uniform roughness. And then we can change the endpoint as well. We could just set this one five, for example. Oh, that's a bit uh, crazy. We can move the endpoints out a slight bit, I guess. I guess well, that was a bit too much. Um, and then we can add a little bit of random as well, um, which we can set to like 0.02 as well. And we can crank the size down to like 0.3. Let's see, is that too crazy? It's too crazy. So let's set this randomness to 0.005. There we go. So now we get a bit more randomization in those hairs. Quite beautiful. We could even add a little bit of kink. And what that's going to do is actually add, for example, a curler, a radial wave, braid, spiral. We can add some options to add to our hair shape, right? So if we add curl, I mean, this is interesting, but not quite what I'm looking for. Um, well, we can tune down that amplitude by a lot, 0 0.05 perhaps, it's even too much, 0 0.005, let's see. That is better, and the frequency, let's crank this up a little bit. 0.05, is that too weird? A little bit. A little bit more flatness, which means they're going to stand together more. Um, 0 0.05 perhaps. Um, I'm not really a fan of how this looks yet, um, so I guess the amplitude is still too big. Uh, that's a bit better, better, I suppose. Okay, um, let's add a little bit more clump in this as well. We'll have to clump better, better. Um, but it's a fun looking work, I guess, right? And what we can do as well is just go to the particle edit and let's create a tiny bit of randomization here. I'm going to chew my strength down all the way to 0 0.1, for example. There we go. And I'm just going to move this a bit to the right, this a bit to the left. There we go, beautiful. Make some random, random hair curves, right? As if people have been walking over this, dogs and cats have been lying on it over time, and those hairs will be flattened a little bit. Perhaps a coffee table has been standing on this, or even the legs of a couch, you know? Could be, could be. Make a story for your object. That always helps to sell the realism, I suppose. Something like that. And we could even make some hair curves a bit longer than the others if we would like that, right? So we could change a little bit of that length. Um, for example, a bit here, or a bit more length there, or a bit there. Make this, make this nice, right? And that's what you have when you have like those fluffier fur things, I guess. You have a bit more of um, random length in the hairs too. Um, so let's just move this out a little bit as well. So we lose a bit of these hard edges at the sides. And there we go. Beautiful. And let's just keep it like that. Go back to object mode. And now I would start adding a material. Okay. So we've got a hair shape as well. So by default, if I go to render view, this is going to look very um, thick. So let's go to cycles and GPU for a sec. And let's go to our hair particles and let's actually right away set our diameter for the roots, which is the bottom of our hair, the start point to point, mm, point 0.1 and point oh, oh, five, point oh, 0.05. Let's see how that looks. Probably still too thick, but we'll see. Okay, that's not too bad. Right, you can see the bottoms are looking thicker, the endpoints are looking a bit thinner. Perhaps we can go even with point 0.2. And point. Is that too crazy? 
Not really. Not really, I suppose. So, something like that. Not too bad. And let's just go and hit the shader tab as well. Hit new. Let's add a little material. And this is going to be our original carpet material. So, we'll call it carpet. And we can hit the plus and find new material that we call hairs. Right, so now in the particle settings, we can set that to be our material. Let me see where that is. Render tab, perhaps. Yes. Material hairs. And then we can add a little hair material there. So let's delete this principled BSDF. Shift A, principled hair BSDF. There we go. Connect that up. And then we could add a little bit of a hair material, right? Crank down the roughness. Perhaps you want this to be white, you know, could be. Um, I like to work with melanin whenever you work with something that is, um, for example, an animal fur, something like that, or a fake animal fur, you know. Um, we can also go with direct coloring. coloring. It's completely up to you. Um, so let's actually add a little bit of an environment, because that always gives us more of an idea of how it's going to look. I'm going to open up an HDRI. If you don't have one, go to polyhaven.com or any other HDRI website, get them for free. And I'm going to open up uh, something cool, perhaps a burnt warehouse, you know. I don't really care how it looks as long as it gives me the right lighting. So go to the render tab, go to film and transparent. So now we just have the environment lighting going on. And I'm going to delete our original lights because that's too bright. Look, there we go. This looks a lot better already. All right, so now we can really change this this hair system right we can add a bit more roughness for example if we want this to be more of a rough coat and um, something like that we can now also add textures right and the way to do that is to just add a texture at the tint of our principled hair right so we could go for example for a noise texture connect that in the tint there we go color ramp in between that's the wrong one color ramp and crank these values a bit closer and you'll get some some nice looking noise patterns right you can control shift click see how it looks and change the colors to be a bit closer to each other so we can go with a little bit of a brown color perhaps change this one to be a bit more brown as well perhaps a bit darker too you know go crazy with it and then i would like to add a little bit of random color just for fun add a little bit of random roughness too and let's see how much radial rush roughness we like do I want this to be nice and shiny or a bit more thick? I think I'll go with the thick one to just... Let, let's create more of like a fake animal fur, right? And something like this looks quite beautiful. I'm going to change this more to brown though. There we go. And change this a bit darker. And it's a bit more... Like it's like a fake bison coat or something. It's not real. I will never, never make a real... Animal fur coat, guys. Come on, this is a fake one. Um, so now I can just crank up this number, for example, to 39. <laughs> 39. And now it is much thicker, right? A much thicker fur. Um, the clipping doesn't really look like I would love it to be, though. And um, we can see the more we add, the, the stronger the clumping is going to look as well. Um, so perhaps this is a bit too much of clumping going on for the hair length we have. And so let's set this down to like 0.3 and see how it looks. Give it a sec. Ah, that is a lot better, right? Um, so I think this looks quite cool, actually. Um, now we can just go out. Let's zoom in a little bit, right? I will just create a nice render. I think they are a little bit too thick in this case, though. Um, so 0.1 and 0.05 is usually going to work. That's pretty much what I always set for my hairs. There we go. That looks a little bit better. Um, I want some of that shine on my hair too. Um, so perhaps I'm just going to add a bit less radial roughness. Or should we just increase, decrease the, the general roughness? There we go. Beautiful. And that is a cool looking rug. Very soft, I suppose. Um, so you can now change the shape of your cloth at any time as well. Um, and do your grooming again if you like that. Um, but actually, I quite like this. I'm going to add a little light, a little area to just highlight some of these hairs a bit more. Let's crank up the value. There we go. To like a bit more orange. I like to um, really 
strengthen the look I have on my fur, right? If I'm going for like a um like a brownish, reddish kind of color, I would usually just pick the same color in my light as well, just to strengthen that look a little bit. Especially when I go for renders like this. And um, it helps a lot, I feel like. Perhaps more of a rim lighting though. Something like that. Here we go, just so it adds a little bit of that light to the right side. That's looking quite beautiful. Okay, now I think we're there, right? It's quite an easy way to create nice looking carpets. Now what I would recommend if you have your, if it, if it looks nice, right? You can just set your display amount back to five or even less, like two, right? So why not? And then I'm going to set the same input here, control C, the noise texture and color ramp. I'm going to set that as well for my carpet and control V It's empty. Okay. Sometimes I just need to right mouse and copy for it to work. I'm not sure why. I connect it there as well, all right? It's gonna use the same UVs pretty much. So the noise pattern should look the same. Crank up that roughness, beautiful. And uh, just so that when we have more hairs, you won't see that white plane through it anyway. You will see the color of the hairs a bit more, right? So this will be our work setup. And then once you render this, you get the full view of the particles, the full amount of particles. So if you want an image texture, the last thing we can do the exact same thing, right? Shift A, image texture. We can hit open, find any texture that you like. I don't really have um, a cool textures I could use for fur. Uh, but perhaps I'm just going to go with... Uh, what one am I going to do? What am I going to do? Like a, this is like a forest image. <laughs> I just go with the flow, I suppose. Let's hit that in the basic image, right? So this is my forest. I can use the same color for my hairs right there. Oh my god, it's not copying again. I hate it. Copy paste and hit that into the tint and we get like the forest tint and then we can actually crank up the, the the display amount to just see how that looks in our carpet right it's gonna look beautiful i promise you see you can create a lot of cool looking uh, works with this and let me just show you this with by opening a lot um a lot of other textures as well like this one is like a dust image it doesn't really look cool but you know <laughs> Um, let's see, I can choose anyone. This is like a bark, quite cool, to be honest. I will buy this, you know. Um, so anything looks quite decent when you have some hairs on it, right? I even have fire, it's looking interesting, <laughs> to say the least. I quite like that bark one. Oh, this one will probably look cool as well. Yeah, beautiful. Um, so play around with that and create a cool carpet. Use a cool texture, anything works, create an image, shoot an image outside of something you like, a texture you like, and it will work beautifully. And we can use this one, for example, as well. Beautiful. Um, I quite liked this one. Yeah, looks really cool. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, please leave a like, a comment, subscribe. I would enjoy any one of those. And then we will see you in the next one. Cheers.